get the boat out next week. We're going to barefoot on micro inverters. Yeah, that's it. Try copy that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> good luck. Good luck. Yeah. Like, good luck. That's We're just going to keep moving. We're going to keep that's pivoting. We're going to keep doing the things that we do day in, day out. Man, Jake, we're yeah. back. How are you? We're back. I'm well. How awesome. are you? Pumped, I'm pumped, mate. actually. Pumped. This is my second potty today. Second I'm today. Pleased to have you. And it's Friday. <laughs> it's Friday. It's Friday. We've done. Yes. We've had a week of beautiful sun. We have, haven't we? The it's weather. Been a cracking week. The weather. What a turnaround. What a, man, what a week to be a solar installer. Yes. Like, the boys had a good opportunity to dry out their harnesses, That's their lot. You know, <laughs> I'm not joking. They've got, after a rain a week, they've got to hang them up, you know, make sure they dry. Totally. If you don't look after your safety gear, you get mold on it, yeah. it's no longer safety gear. Shout out to the boys. Like, <laughs> work, working through the rain, like, they get it done. They are mm. the absolute soldiers behind the system warriors yeah the warriors the warriors yeah. the solar athletes absolutely boys like you know shout out to the boys i agree absolutely the backbone the backbone the psc indeed the the thing psc was built on high quality installs yeah you know people yeah people mm. doing high quality installs you absolutely. know that was always what we were good at from day one we were never good at anything else it was yes. just installs yeah yeah so shout Pride. out to the boys, yeah. Absolutely. And by the way, we don't we don't push them to work in the rain. By the no, way, no. they make their own assessment, and we do not encourage them to work in the rain, particularly yes. on like a slippery tin roof or something. Yeah. But sometimes, like on a nice sandy tile roof, it actually can be just as grippy. But yeah. Um, yeah. that's up to them to make that call. Yeah. Anyway, Dan, potty three. Potty three. What are we talking it's about today? It's been a today? great week. Well, well, obviously, you and I, we attended the Smart Energy Conference during the week. And, that we uh, did. It was an exciting day. It was a long day. But, yes. um, you know, I was blessed with a great chaired, chaired session of yourself in the afternoon, which was <laughs> on one of the most uh, enlightening <laughs> sessions of <laughs> safety and regulations yes. that I've ever been through. Yes. But, uh, it was riveting, wasn't you it? You serve the people, <laughs> mate. You serve the people. Got to be for the people, man. You, you got to give back. You, you got to give it. back. You nailed it. We, Jake's Jake's famous for his. Uh, take a minute, everyone. Three breaths in, three breaths <laughs> out. And On three seconds, ready. Three, two, one, in, and out. Fix your posture. Let's go. But Hell yeah, man! Was, uh, Shout out to Co and yeah, Ray for intro. those uh, <laughs> tips. those energy <laughs> tips. You know how to how to make people lift. Yes. yes. Yeah. But I had a great time. One of the first things that it took my eye when we uh, had a bit of a, a walk around the, the uh, show was the electric trucks. You know, this this prototype um, was an incredible, like just captured your eye, this giant battery uh, yeah. underneath the cab and, uh, you know, this, the, the fork tines that, that screamed out at me, just, you know, obviously this thing is built for, you know, quick change over times. Yeah, what did yeah. you think about it? Like, Mate, I thought it was mad. Yeah. Um, I thought, like, it was obviously a retrofit. Mm. It's an old... Mm. Maybe maybe like late nineties Kenworth. If I was to pick, I mean, yeah. I'm not a truck guy, no, but no. but I do know I do know something about trucks and what they've done or the way that they're selling this electric truck mm. is that mm. uh, they're not necessarily brand new trucks. They are a retrofit and uh, a diesel motor. You know, like they, they tell me, does about a million k's on the road before yep. it gets swapped out. It's a, it's a lot That's of kilometers, yep. right? Yep. It's a lot of CO2. Mm, mm, and at two mm. bucks something a litre, that's yeah, a lot of dollars, dollars. A lot of dollary dues. Um, so what the goal is, is once the truck reaches, it's all the motor, because the truck doesn't reach its lifespan there. Mm. You know, trucks are regularly maintained and their shell, you know, has a far greater lifespan than a million Ks. Mm -hmm. But the motor does not. So when it comes time to replace that motor, which might cost you, I don't know, 70, 80, 90 grand, mm -hmm. Um, it's time to put an electric motor in it. So yeah. they're doing these retrofit kits. It's 150 grand. Mm -hmm. And what that includes is a uh, electric motor. Mm -hmm. I cannot remember the, the actual measurement, the Newton meters of torque that they said this thing had. It was like maybe 5,000 Newton meters of torque yeah. like at the wheels with this electric motor. And they're not driving it hard. Mm -hmm. They're just... They're, they're not depleting batteries slow or fast. Their one thing was is batteries don't last when you draw them draw down on them fast and recharge yes. them fast and they're right yep you know um so th they were big on that and it's 650 kilowatt hours worth of storage on this truck so nice. like 650 so nice. it's like maybe 50 tesla power wall tubes yeah. strapped yeah. under this truck man That's so, nice. so when when like when i thought about 
the value of this mm. conversion. Mm. Mm. I was like, that's actually goddamn cheap. Mm. Mm. You know, really, really, really cheap. Absolutely. So I don't know how they're doing it. Um, At what scale either? Like, it, obviously, they're, I think he, he mentioned he's got half a dozen trucks at the moment. Yeah. Did you talk to him or? I did speak to yep. him. Yeah. He, yep. d- he did say, I know that one they had was like the, their prototype. Yep. Um, they, their goal is to have these charging stations mm. down, down the highway, you know, mm. down the Hume Highway to start with and then I guess everywhere else. It's not, you don't pull in though and plug your truck in. That would take quite some time. It's a swap out service. Right. It's like a swap and go gas bottle. Mm. So he said, a B double would get about 550 Ks to a full charge yep. sitting on, I think a hundred Ks on the highway, which trucks are speed limited to, I believe. Um, so man, like for step one, you know, it's, it's That's the, it, right? it's step yeah. one, yeah. like it's step one mm. and it works and it's uh, compared to diesel, like great, you know, and I know everyone loves their big Cummins motors, mm. you know, diesel soot gets, gets, yep. gets the action, but um, yep. let's move over. That's it. It's time for the electric lifestyle. That's it. Totally. Mm. And that's a great market too. Like, so, so the idea is like you bring your car in and we'll convert it. Is that, is that the concept or am I yes. missing that here? No, no, no. That's the concept. Yeah. So you, you yeah. bring your truck in Yes. Uh, and they do do car conversions. They actually do home kits as well. Really? Yeah, they do do home kits as well. Um, and you bring it in, they convert it. They rip the motor out, they put the electric motor in um, and they they give you a set of batteries and, and set you wow. up on the network. So therefore, you're part of their architecture of, of yep. you know, the battery swap and go system. Yes, yes, yes the, the absolutely. You buy into their, their, stock, their, network, of their stock of batteries. Yeah. yeah. And wow. it's, you know, they've got really intelligent battery management systems on them. So... I guess maybe you wouldn't actually own the batteries. And the more mm. I think about 150 grand, I'm thinking you probably wouldn't own the batteries. That's exactly right. I think you'd own like the truck and you'd, you'd, you'd like potentially lease the batteries maybe well, for for that short period of time. It's just like fuel jack. You pay, to ch- mm. you pay to swap it out. Like you pay per swap. Like it's True. just a less cost to fill 300 litres of diesel though. Like the economics would have to be better than that of fuel. Oh, otherwise. of course. I mean, you, 650 kilowatt hours, uh, buying it at that scale, like let's call it, I don't know, 18 cents a kilowatt hour. Mm. Let's call it 20 for quick math. Yeah. Uh, what's that, 130 100, bucks? 130 bucks, yeah. yeah. Like yeah. versus 300, 400 litres of diesel. I don't yeah. even know how much tr- fuel uh, truck takes. Yeah. It's, gotta be, it's gotta be more than that. Yeah. Like yeah. 500 litres of diesel, you know, Dude, full, yeah. full charge, full, yeah. full tank, you know, but you're over a thousand bucks. Yes, you're right. But they're mm. probably getting more than 500 Ks to that amount of diesel. I don't know. I wouldn't have a clue. I wouldn't have a clue. I would hope they do. If they had, do- if they don't, if they don't, why get aren't they on batteries already? You know, like no, that's crazy. I reckon, I'll tell you what, I don't reckon they'd get much more than really? 500 Ks. Wow. A litre of K? Yeah, yeah. Wow. It's pulling big numbers, hey? It's, like it's a weight. big vehicle, yeah. bro. Yeah. Like, it's a B-double. Like, mm. it's big. Mm. Mm. I, would be surpri- I wouldn't be surprised if I'll they're not. I'd love to do a bit... Of, I will do a bit of homework <clears> on that. <throat> I'd love to mm. just, just learn more about... Yeah. Because, obviously, electric vehicles are here. Yeah. Ele- electric heavy vehicles aren't here. You mm. know, th- mm. this is like... They're in the prototype stage. Yep. Electric cars are past prototype stage. Yeah. They're, they're, yeah. they're in volume production. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you know, electric heavy vehicles, electric heavy yeah. machinery. Yes. You know, yeah. um, agricultural heavy machinery is, um, I'm sure, also at the prototype stage. Absolutely. I would imagine. Absolutely. Mm. I mean, Tesla also, of course, have a electric semi, mm. Um, mm. which is in trial. I guess mm. um, they've built a few of them, and the specs that Elon gives is huge. Actually, one thing um, the gentleman said to me who made this electric truck in Australia. He said all that truck manufacturers are interested in. It's not like range or top speed. Well, it is those things, but their main concern is, he said it's a number, it's a metric. Uh, they call it intersection cross time. Mm. What's the time to cross an intersection from stop to go? Mm. And he said that it's like half the time of a, of a diesel engine. Like the, the talk, the, the just... Oh, to get off the mark. To get off the mark. Really? They're really big on uh, like cross section of traffic lights, traffic light cross section time. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, wow, which I thought was cool. It makes total yeah. sense. Like yeah. it makes, I know like, you know, with a diesel motor, you, you smashing gears. Yes. Which I wonder if it actually has gears. He did say it has a... It, he yeah, did say it had he, gears? Well, he said, well, it had, had a diff, obviously, but... Well, um, yeah, it would have to have I, a diff. I, I, 
Yeah, I don't know if it I'm not sure box. if it did. Wow. We should look into this. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm fascinated. But anyway, it Maybe was... Maybe we can get him on the podcast. Who knows? <laughs> I reckon we probably <laughs> could. Yeah. Speaking of getting people on the podcast, yes. another person, uh, one of my standouts, one of my all-time favourites, Nigel Morris. Um, mm-hmm. Shout out to Nigel from Solar yeah. Analytics. Celebrating 30 years in the solar industry, you him. know, got awarded at the S, uh, the Smart Energy Conference. And, um, man, that guy's a pioneer. Like, mm. he lives and breathes solar, you know. Mm. Like, he has his own podcast. And he's all about data, this guy. Yep. And, um, yep. you know, one of the reasons I love Nige is he's just real. What you see is what you get with him. But he also practices his electric lifestyle. Yep. He's got one of those new live wire Harley oh, Davidsons. So, cool. so um, we're pushing. We're going to get Nigel on the podcast. And we're yep. going to talk all things data, consumption, monitoring. Mm. Like, the guy's a wizard. He's Geek out on it. I speak to him and, like, I feel like I'm relatively rounded and, and have yep. great knowledge. But I speak to this guy and I leave, you know, conversations. Him, him and... Um, him and Glenmo, and uh, and these guys like just talk on another wavelength. Level. Again, mm. yep. they're deeper. They're technically, um, you know, so deep and so rich in information. And yes, you know, these are the people I like to speak to Surround these conferences. Yeah, absolutely. yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Like awesome. just next level. But um, yeah, the electric lifestyle. So he's got the, the live wire, which is my missing piece. Yeah, true. I deserve a live true, wire. True. Huh? Sinead, please <laughs> come on. <laughs> Good oh. thing happens to those who wait. I mean, you've Absolutely. got a, you've got an e-bike. You've got yep. you, well, you've got a few electric things. Yep. You're doing all right, man. You're doing I know, all right. mate. I know. I, sh- I shall not complain. Let, that's it. What else did you take away from the expo, Dan? Good one. We're well, personally looking forward to here mm-hmm. that are coming soon with different suppliers, which N-phase is great. Batteries, yeah, the N-phase, N-phase batteries, batteries in particular was was super exciting to, How to, sexy to was see it? in the flesh. Like you know? it, was it was sexy, beautiful. man. Like it it was just so nice yeah. from an electrician's point of view. Yes. Like install method. The way it gets wired, you mm. know, the simplicity of this product, the stackability, the scalability, it's going to be something special. And that's one thing talking to the boys, right, that can be, it's a bit of a bummer with the Tesla, is just the weight of it. Manual yeah, handling yeah. that thing. Yep. So if, if this M-phase battery is more modular, mm. you know, in smaller smaller modular pieces, yep. like if, if the client's still wanting 15 kilowatt hours of storage, mm. and mm. It, I don't know if this is true, but it comes in five, three, five kilowatt hour pa- sections yes. much safer easier Definitely. to handle yeah. and, mm-hmm. and install so really done well there mm. and that's going to earn a lot of brownie points with installers well it's their handling whole it's is. their whole model right yep. decentralizing the centralized yes they've done it, they've done it with inverters yep. yes. they're going to do it with battery storage as well yep. so yep. each of these like five kilowatt hour battery packs has four iq8s inside of them Bad so nice. it was great to touch the iq8 and yeah. know that it's it's, it's, it's real, real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um man shout out to Enphase. Yeah, well uh, as as usual you know well like done. those those guys go above and beyond for us and mm. you know to go and support them at, you know in their booth and see what's going on like i love the energy mm. you know we speak to so many suppliers at these conferences and um and phase has a different energy about mm. it these guys are just they're so content in their own skin mm. you know like mm. all the way from their leader you know wilf in australia and and and, and through um the different areas like ryan in mm. technical and christian mm. in sales like mm. They are very well defined. They yes. each know their role yes. to, to and, and working together on that one common mission, electrifying mm. the home, oh. you know, which is so beautiful. Some of the other manufacturers that you kind of speak to, like a bit all over the place. You know, mm. They've got people from all around the world, which is great, but mm. they're not working on one common goal. No. They're, they're scattered, mm. you know. They're, there's mm. one doing this, one doing that, one's doing this. I can help you here. And it's like you can't doubt their effort. Mm. Their effort is huge. And I describe it as like they both have the same gun they have the same bullet mm. one has a target one shooting in the air yeah, they're yeah. running a different race that's it. and i think that's that's the difference Enphase yeah. has that like lightning vision which just comes from their incredible leadership skills you mm. know from from the very very top so shout out to them yeah it's, well it done. was um it was great to see i think fronius had a really good stand as well even though uh obviously we don't uh endorse string inverters mm. As far as string inverters go, you know they are they are moving fast. They've got some mm. cool new products. They've mm. got um, they've got this one product that I like called the Ohm Pilot, mm. and what it does is it puts your excess solar into 
um, like into your hot water. So it's kind of, yeah, right. yeah. So instead of selling it to the grid for not much, yep. it kind of turns your hot water system into a battery storage unit. Well, yeah, it's not nice. really battery storage, but it's storage. By heating it prematurely? That's or? right. Yeah. Well, it, it heats your hot water tank. Yep. Um, so it s- essentially makes your hot water tank smart. Yeah. And, and, and instead of selling excess energy to the grid, it would actually put your energy into your hot water. Now, I've always been a, a real big fan of hot water diverters being complete waste of time, mm. right? The numbers are never stacked up. Mm. However... I am shifting my opinion on that mm. as, um, you know, we more focus on the goal of net zero by 2050. Mm. This is a real thing, which has in the last, I reckon, 12 to 18 months become my primary focus. Mm. I've, I've connected myself to that mission, whereas mm. in the before that, it was all about saving people money. Yep. Now it's, it's different, you know. Yep. So my um, I guess my values have slightly shifted into a more sustainable train of thought. Um which is which is nice and and so now with that in mind these hot water diverters we're not really sort of seeing them go out a lot at the moment but i think the next couple of years they will be a a bolt on to solar systems and gotcha. i think we will we will put energy into hot water tanks and then pull energy out of hot water tanks when we need it it's just a way of storing energy how do it's you pull energy out of the hot water tank by using hot water Okay. So what you do is instead of like heating your, even if you're heating your hot water in off peak overnight, yep. which is great, the energy is cheaper. Mm. Um, what you actually do is you, you heat it when you have excess PV available, mm. excess solar. Mm. Um, and then I know, you know, that solar can be sold to the grid for a feed in tariff. But now, th- you know, sustainably and the numbers are making sense to instead of selling it to the grid, tuck it into your hot water tank, heat mm. your hot water mm. when you have the opportunity to. Mm. And then at night time, you, you're using that energy by using hot water mm. um, and mm. instead of using buying energy, even if it is off peak at mm. night time, you know. If off peak turns on and your hot water tank's already heated, um, the thermostat won't let you use energy. So mm. it's already heated, it's ready to go. Yep. Just because your off peak turns on doesn't force your tank to charge or to, gotcha. to heat, it still has a thermostat inside of it. Gotcha. Yeah. Yep. yep. And do you think heat pumps are the premium Option. smart technology for hot water s- for electric hot water systems? Yeah, yeah, I, th- I believe so. Um, I've I've sort of been doing a little bit of research into them, and a good friend of mine, uh, Mitchell Dobson, who's building a new house, and we're obviously electrifying it for him. He he did a lot of research in it with and for me, um, and I sort of steered him down the path of heat pump. But this guy is like a data guy. He mm. he operates off like data. He loves data. Mm. So same as Nigel Morris. <laughs> He's a very clever electrician as well, yeah, by the cool. way. Really, really hyper clever electrician. Mm. And um, he did a lot of research, and he said to me, Jake, these heat pumps by far the best option. You know, like efficiency wise, um, with a like you, with a heat pump, you have the opportunity to generate or have a better energy ratio. Mm. So if you put one in, you can get like 1.2 out. Whereas like if you've got a 3.6 kilowatt element in your hot water tank, it takes 3.6 kilowatts to uh, heat the water and you get that energy out of the element. You have losses in the tank, obviously, from yep. heat you know, being, being lost, lost, depending on how good the shell is of the tank. Yep. Um, and yeah, I think heat pumps, they take a lot of ambient air temperature and, and almost transfer the water, like that temperature into the water for free. Mm. So you kind of get a bit of a start, you know, yeah. you get, with the heat pumps, you have you do have an element override as well, I yep. believe, so that it will work um, and, and actually get the, the water up to temperature if it's freezing outside. And in winter, they're less effective than summer. Summer, mm. they are very, very effective. But mm. Um, mm. my new home that I'm moving into is already electrified and it's yep. got a heat pump and I'm yep. super excited to see like actually live that lifestyle myself um because where i am at the moment the the last bit of gas in the house uh, almost the last bit of gas was um was the hot water and the the pros of that is endless hot water untapped amount of hot water the cons is is using gas and gas is actually not cheap Mm. everyone thinks gas is cheap but Mm. it's not it's really really expensive now Mm. um so yeah I'm, i'm excited to sort of see that and to um, you know, potentially in the future, PSC might offer services like hot water diversion um, mm. and yeah, heat pumps maybe either. I think is a is an option for us as mm. well. Although we're not plumbers, I think it fits into electrifying the the house. That's it, and and like obviously, you know, solar and storage is such a huge percentage of the the mar- like the problem mm. to electrify the home hot yes. water is just going to be this ignored thing unless mm. unless, unless someone does people like us start yeah. start 
um, offering that service mm. or even just um, identifying yeah. that part of the home yep. that if it's just ignored, well, then it's never really going to be corrected yep. if anyone like does something about it. Well, do you know it, what's so crazy? Mm. Like there actually is a government rebate or STCs, same as what you get on solar system, mm. on heat pumps. Really? Yes. There so you, you can get... It's I, I must research the amount but it's about seven hundred dollars that you'll get off the price of a heat pump um from the federal government there you go yeah which is pretty cool you is, know would that phase out in 2030 do you reckon i believe so i believe mm. it tapers down yet same we're in yep solar. it's same mm. same scheme so mm. um yeah we, we it does step down every year by around seven percent yep so yeah, it's a it's an interesting thing to look into. I mm. don't think it's been as adopted as, as obviously rooftop PV, mm. mainly because mm. rooftop PV does so much more than the hot water tank. I think mm. you know that's mm. why it catches everyone's attention. It's everyone's step one of electrifying their home. Correct. Yep. Mm. Yep. That's what else awesome. did you see, Dan? Did you yeah, meet anyone that you show, loved? Yeah. Oh, I met a, a lot of our a lot of our partners, a lot of people yeah. at Emphase. Yep. I sort of met for the first time. Seeing Justin again was great. Um, Isn't he a great man? He's a great man. Shout out to you, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yes, yeah, so what else did we do? I mean, by, by the time we were sort of getting settled, we had to gear up for your little presentation in the afternoon yes. there. So, um, but if it was the electric bikes were really cool, that electric, um, I think it was a race car, right? It was a, like a endurance car right next to the bikes and trucks. It's oh. a funny looking thing, terribly unattractive yes, car. It's, that it's like some sort of. Was that the Sydney Uni car? Yeah. I'm, was it Was I'm, it that I'm one? I'm not sure. It, it, it mm. looks like this giant satellite dish on yeah, the Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, I think it's sponsored by SunPower. I think it's got Sun, like Maxion cells on top of it. Is that right? Yeah. 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 The, yeah. The the one out of Sydney University, and I must admit, I didn't really look too deep into that because I was so fascinated mm. by that truck, mm. which mm. was right next to that car. Yes. <laughs> um, but that that the Sydney Uni team, like they are, um, I, I believe they win all those races. Like they're yeah. really, really good. Right in our backyard, you know, Sydney University, so cool. Western Sydney University. Yeah. Um, yeah. That so it's like an, it's like mm. an innovation project, you know, like the boring mm. companies doing their, or the Hyperloop thing. Yeah. So like they've got, you know, I love that. I love these um, initiatives by universities and by yep. groups to work on a, collective project yep. to i don't know drive a thousand kilometers yes on one charge you know because it's being powered as it goes you know? yeah i think that's its concept like it doesn't it can just go for an insane distance almost infinite in just not stop. I actually yeah. i yeah. don't even know if they have storage in them well i mean they must yeah they must yeah yeah they must otherwise, otherwise it's it's only got drive when it's powered you know? well they would have like but it pv it down. and then it would have a regulator it was aerodynamically optimized you know it, yeah. it was shaped yeah yeah yeah, yeah. oh it would be light as too so you're right you wouldn't mm. want too much storage in it because of the weight yeah but, um, interesting maybe just like even some sort of capacitor banks mm. just to store like briefly store mm. that troughs of energy mm. and and mm. use it but um, yeah, I must look into that also. Mm. I've got a lot of things to look into. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. But yeah, what so else good. we had? We had. Um, I'm just trying to think if there was anything quirky, like anything weird or obscure. I was trying. I'm just trying to remember. I, well, I mean, there's so many companies trying to sell batteries. Batteries are the hype, right? Yeah, now. they you are. Know, there they? are a lot of um, yep. Chinese manufacturers yep. with cells and like so many companies trying to do batteries. Mm. It really worries me. Mm. You know, like. Mm. There are companies out there bringing on batteries, but using, you know, they're, oh, they're, they're not even making the battery. They're just rebranding another battery, mm. which is already out there and mm. may be good, may not be good. Someone like Tesla would, would not ever let anyone rebrand their product. Mm. These are other Chinese sort of manufacturers that um, OEM'd and, and they would, they'll brand it as, as pleased, they're really. Right yeah. 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 That, that worries me. You know, mm. I think people, consumers will be probably burnt over a lot mm. of those products mm. like who owns them mm. who owns the warranty has yeah. that company actually done the r&d to build a battery mm. do they deserve to build a battery mm. like um if you're you know if you there are other like these manufacturers like they might be panel manufacturers they might be racking manufacturers and they're, they're trying to deviate they're, they're, in my opinion they're getting greedy mm. they're trying to take a big mm. piece of the pie like mm. everyone out there is creating an energy retailer mm. or something like that and 
it just worries me that these people are putting their energy into the wrong places. If you're good at panels or you're good at cells, like, man, be the number one. And this is me. Like, I'm not one of these big monster companies. I'm just seeing it from the little fella point mm. of view. Mm. Like, do what you're good at and do it so goddamn good that your value proposition yeah. in that one product outweighs everything else yeah. there are no choices because we are the best at this yeah. q cells we sell yeah. q cells yeah? yeah and and they've introduced this q home product mm. now q cells are a company that were like they sell panels to, to people like us and mm. a great panel you know mm. a really really solid panel there's no ifs or buts about it they make mm. a fantastic product mm. But now they've gotten into this Q home and, and they're now an energy retailer and they're this and they're that. Mm. And before you know it, like we got the Sydney Home Show at the end of this month. We're not competing against other, um, you know, solar companies anymore. Well, really, we're all competing against coal and fossil fuels. But yes. we're not competing against other local companies, which is great healthy competition for mm. consumers. We're now competing against Q-Cells, yes. a manufacturer of this product yeah. who's like, they've gone, oh, well, let's muscle our way into here and let's see if we can stand up against these little guys. But then on the back of that, they're trying to book meetings with us and, and mm. you know, sell us their energy plan products. Mm. Like, stay mm. in your own lane, mm. man. Mm. Or mm. buy an in-store company, do the whole and lot start whole to finish. Lot. Good luck to you. Yep. Don't sell bits and pieces of your product mm. to people like us. It just ain't going to fly, yeah. you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. Totally agree. Just like that, they're, they're looking to try. Rubs and me up get, the wrong way. Yeah, gotcha. Totally. The consumer will make the call. The market will yeah. decide ultimately, yep. right? You know, they're yep. they're gonna um, be influenced more by their local installer mm. and the reputation of you know their neighbour, their family, yeah. um, and their experience versus potentially you know sales pitches from yep. ads and juggernauts at home shows so it, it will all come out in the end mm. but like you said it's it's the what you do day in day out i think yeah and i seen a stat the other day just on that mm. um, from a manufacturer that said only 27 percent of consumers that's you guys will listen to what their solar installer wants to sell them they mm. reckon that their brand recognition and whatever overrides what the solar installer sells them. Well, that obviously 100% of our customers listen to us because we only sell the one things. Mm. Mm. They think they're really, really um, in customers' pockets, I guess. Well, like in these their minds, yeah. They think they're all a Tesla or an mm. N. Like these are brands that are really well known. Clients do come to us and say, I want a Tesla battery. You know, mm. like it's one of the most slick beautiful brands in the entire world mm. um but these other manufacturers they don't they don't have that power but they, they kind of think they do yes. and it, it's kind of fr like it's up to the installer uh, well, like up to people to do their own research mm. but their biggest bit of research they could possibly do is on their installer mm. if you find an installer that is going to back the products and you know give you the best installation quality possible that's the win listen yeah. to what they have to say so all right, Jake, so let's wrap it up. What was your biggest takeaway from the show? Yeah, my biggest takeaway, mate, like the show's the show every year. There's mm. always this cool, like next level cool stuff. I think we're innovating the most. Nice. My, my biggest like takeaway from the show was the amount of installers and people that come up to me and said, man, your content is crispy. Legend. So shout out to Dan yeah. for the Thanks, content. Bro. Thanks, bro. But um, yeah, look, it was uh, like just... People are seeing what we're doing, mm. you know. People are not only sort of seeing, you know, um, I guess our install quality and and the beautiful things that we are doing out in the field and in the community, and um, but but they're they're sort of seeing the content that we're producing and and you know appreciating our constant innovation and constantly trying to keep on top. Well, not even on top, just keep a part of it, you That's know, right. like being a, a key pillar of this industry that we're in. Totally, man, and and it's. One, one awesome thing that <coughs> drew me to you when we first met was like, it, it, you're just willing to fail until you succeed. Mm. Like we're willing to keep trying and trying different stuff. Like mm. this, this podcast in some ways is, is an experiment. Like yeah. we believe in um, sharing the message, the education, the beliefs that we have yeah. about the industry and what we're working towards. And, um, you know, it doesn't all, it's not always going to go well, but it's, it's um, we're going to be showing up. Showing Absolutely. up every time. Showing you, up every showing week. Showing up is the most important mm. thing, you know. Like, you can outwork, you know, you can do it, whatever you want in life if you show up. Yes. And I think, like, the fact that we keep showing up and 
um, like just as we do wrap up, you know, I know there was a sniggly comment thrown out at the Smart Energy Expo about yep. like our bus advertising, like my yep. face is on the side of like yep. 25 buses or something like that. Yep. People think like competitors, competitors think that that's where all of our customers come from. Mm. Well, like, mm. no, mm. that's a piece of the pie. Mm. That's a piece of the, the big, big wheel that mm. is, that we have turning this is probably more, this gets more traction than mm. those buses mm. and the video and, and all this value rich content mm. that we're putting out mm. gets uh, the, the, the higher value we deliver to, to people. That's what, you know, brings in, brings in people who want to work with us. Totally. Yeah. So like mm. you can, you can imitate so much. Mm. You can imitate signage. You can even imitate brand name. Like we're named, our name's Penrith Solar Center. There's another yeah. company in Penrith that's tried to imitate our name and built a website, Solar Penrith. Like mm. go away. Yeah. <laughs> you can't possibly imitate who we are. Yeah. We will yeah. outwork you yeah. every day of the week. Yeah. We will out deliver yeah. you every day of the week. We will do what is not possible mm. to mm. make sure that we are the greatest we possibly can be. And it's not like a ruler against other companies. That's no. what kind of annoys me. Well, mm. flat, like it's, it's flattering almost, but a little bit of it's like, oh, we just try something different. Like mm. Mm. we're going to get the boat out next week. We're going to barefoot on micro inverters. Yeah, that's it. Try copy that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> good luck. Yeah. Like good luck. That's we're just going to keep moving. We're going to keep that's pivoting. It. We're going to keep doing the things that we do day in, day out. So man, that was my biggest takeaway. People yep. are respecting and enjoying the things we're putting out there. Um, we hope you enjoyed it too, Absolutely. this podcast. Awesome. That's a wrap, brother. Awesome, man. Thanks, Dan. Well done. Thanks, well Dan. Done. See you guys. See you guys. Catch you next week. See you next week. Bye. Or this afternoon. <laughs>